The humeral osteotomy is performed by either a freehand cut or with an intramedullary or extramedullary guide provided in the instrument set, taking care to maintain the patient's native articular inclination inversion. The Universe Apex Optifit instrument set contains reamers and brooches designed to prepare the intramedullary canal to match the stem's smaller footprint to minimize bone removal. The initial brooch has an attachable version guide and version rods for proper brooch orientation relative to the osteotomy. Brooch until rotational stability is achieved and the appropriate laser marking is flush with the cut surface. Following canal preparation, a proximal humerus protector is placed and attention is turned to glenoid preparation. There are three glenoid implants available, the universal glenoid convertible base plate, the keeled glenoid, and the vault lock glenoid, which provides immediate press fit fixation on the central peg. The vault lock is demonstrated here. A pin is placed in the center of the glenoid by using the pin guide. The appropriately sized vault lock reamer is positioned over the pin and the glenoid surface is then contoured to support the polyethylene component. The central hole is drilled with a 6 mm cannulated drill stopping once the collar comes in contact with the glenoid surface. The glenoid drill guide is positioned by placing the central peg into the previously drilled hole. A short 6 mm drill bit is used to drill the superior peg hole. It's left in place to stabilize the guide for inferior drilling. The inferior 4.5 mm drill bit is then used to prepare for the inferior keel. The glenoid brooch finalizes inferior keel preparation. Alternatively, the glenoid punch can be used with attention to impact just so the shoulder is flush with the reamed surface. Translucent glenoid trials are available. These provide visualization for the reamed surface while evaluating the proper orientation and fit prior to cementing the polyethylene component. The glenoid vault is cleansed and dried, followed by cement injection in the superior and inferior peg holes. A pressurizing tool is available for displacing cement throughout the vault. Bone graft can be used on the central peg. Autograft can be obtained from the native humeral head by creating a slurry with the bone graft reamer. The slurry is then placed into the graft compression tool, which is clamped around the central peg. Carefully spinning the glenoid component on the grafting tool compresses the bone graft into the flutes of the central peg. Alternatively, a demineralized bone matrix product can be used for grafting the central peg. The vault lock glenoid is then impacted into place. Attention is turned back to the humerus for stem implantation. The OptiFit stem has suture holes in the proximal body for soft tissue repair and subscapularis closure. The apex subscapularis repair technique takes advantage of these holes. Two holes are drilled vertically in the biceps groove for passage of the lateral suture limbs. Two number two fiber wire sutures are passed through the lateral holes yielding four suture limbs, labeled A through D, from superior to inferior. A blue suture is used superiorly and tiger wire inferiorly. Four number two fiber wire sutures are passed through the medial holes, yielding eight suture limbs, labeled one through eight, from superior to inferior. Blue and tiger wire sutures are alternated from lateral to medial. Limbs C and D are passed through the inferior hole from the intramedullary canal out. Similarly, Limbs A and B are passed through the superior hole from the intermedullary canal out. All strands are held out to length on tension as the stem is impacted using the pointed stem impactor, followed by the angled Morse taper stem impactor, placing the trunnion flush to the osteotomy surface. The inclination inferior and version superior screws are then tightened with the torque driver. Trial heads are available to verify proper head size, head offset, shoulder motion, and stability prior to impacting the definitive head component.
Suture limbs 1 through 8 are evenly placed through the medial aspect of the subscapularis tendon from superior to inferior. Proper spacing is key to the final repair. The sutures are then tied in the following sequence, 1 to A, 8 to D, 4 to C, 5 to B, 2 to 3, and 6 to 7. The suture color pattern is such that the first four knots are tied between similar colors, and the last two knots are tied between different colors. In addition, the last two knots are tensioned and create dynamic compression of the subscapularis tendon over the lesser tuberosity. The repair is then evaluated by externally rotating the arm with the arm abducted. The degree of external rotation achieved without stressing the repair is noted for post-operative therapy limitations. The wound is irrigated and superficial closure is performed according to the surgeon's protocol.